Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignerTechTips.com. We're continuing on with our Divi e-commerce store build here today. In the last video we installed and set up WooCommerce. I'm just going to go through the settings for you before we actually create a product because uh, it's pretty important this is this is good stuff. On your dashboard go down to WooCommerce and then to settings we're on the general tab here. This is where you can check your information you put in earlier about where you, where you are. General options, sell to all countries. Well, I just want to sell to the United States. So I'm going to say sell to a specific country. There we go. And I can leave that to ship to all countries I sell to because I've only got the one there. Default customer location, that will tell you where your customer is basically. You can turn that off if you don't want it. You can turn geo location on, but there's a few settings you may need to tweak if you want to do that. For me, it's fine because we're just shipping to the country we're in at the moment. Enable taxes, we mentioned that yesterday. I think that's a good idea because otherwise you're going to end up paying it from your own pocket. Enable coupons. If you intend to sell things at cut prices or with coupons, yeah, it's great. So I'm going to leave that enabled and we'll be uh, making some uh, coupons in further videos. Currency options, as you can see, this is the ones we set up. Here you can decide how it's displayed, thousand separated. We've got a comma there, decimal, we've got a point. And number of decimals too. So it's $2.50, which is absolutely fine for me. So we want to save our changes and move on to the next tab which is the products tab. Now here you can dictate what pages you show your shop items from. A lot of this for what we're doing today is pretty irrelevant because we're using the Divi theme so we're going to be using custom pages but if you're not this is where you set the pages for your shop. Here you can decide when they add something to their cart, you can redirect them straight to the cart as soon as they do it. But I'm going to leave mine, enable Ajax add to cart button on the archives, which is just leaves a button there and they can continue browsing. Now placeholder image, if you've got a product with no image at all, you can put an image in here that'll just show now uh, it could be your logo, it could be anything. To put an image in there, if you open your media library, upload any image that you want. If you simply click on an image, click on any image, here's the URL of that actual image. If you double click on that, you can simply put that in there if you want to. And every time there's a, a product without an image, it'll put in that image for you. All mine have images, so I'm not going to bother with that. Measurements. We set this before weights and uh, ounces and inches. Again, you can change it if you need to. Enable reviews. You can let your customers review the products if you want to. It's always a good idea. And you can show a verified owner label if it's somebody that's purchased that product from you. Now, if you want to, you can only let people leave a review that have actually bought it from your store. So reviewers can only be left by verified owners. And again, you can decide whether you want them to give it star ratings. And you can decide whether that should be required or optional. Take it off, it's optional. Leave it on, it's required. So let's save our changes. Move on to tax. Now we mentioned this before. You can either enter your prices inclusive of tax or you can enter them the price of the object over here in the United States. Most stores you go into, in fact all stores you go into, when you buy things they are non-inclusive of tax. In Europe most places they've got the tax included in the price. So that's entirely up to you. Now you can calculate the tax on the customer shipping address, or customer billing address, 
or the shop base address, which is where I'm located, which is probably the most sensible one because they're buying from wherever you are and so you'd have to pay the state tax from wherever, wherever you are. This I'm going to leave exactly as it is, shipping tax class based on the cart items. And that way it just adds, adds to the tax to whatever items you have in your cart. Here you can choose to round the tax at a subtotal level instead of rounding per line. So in other words, if they've got five items, it'll just show the tax at the bottom instead of under each item. You can add different tax classes if you have zero rate products. Prices in the shop, like I say, because we're in the United States, I'm going to leave them excluding tax. If you want to include it, just hit the drop down and hit include. Display prices during cart and checkout, excluding tax. Again, it's up to you, but I'm going to leave mine excluding tax and the tax will be added at the end. Price display suffix. Well, a suffix is something that comes after something. So this would be something that you want to display after your price. For instance, in the UK, it would be price including VAT or in the United States, you could put excluding tax if you wanted to right in there. I'm going to leave mine right there because most people know exactly what's going on over here. Uh, display tax totals itemized or as a single total. I think I'll have mine as a single total. So let's save changes and move on. Let's go over to shipping. Now I already set mine up as United States flat rate. I put it for $20. If you're shipping to other places, then you can add, simply add a shipping zone and put the price in for that shipping zone. I'm not because I'm just delivering to the United States as it's computers. So let's move on to payments. Now here when we set up, we set up PayPal on its own, which is fine, it works for me. You can flip these on and off right here and configure them to whatever suits you. Now if you wanted to have something like Square or other payment plans, if we go to our plugin page, hit the add new button, in the search box, try WooCommerce, Square, or whatever it is you're looking for. There's a free plugin to add Square to your payment options, and there's pretty there's one for pretty much any payment option that you're likely to want. So let's go back. Didn't make any changes. Don't need to save accounts and privacy. Now you can choose to allow your customers to place orders without an account. You can allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout. That's if they've not logged in at checkout, they can log into their account. All self-explanatory, allow customers to create an account during checkout, allow customers to create an account on the My Account page if you have one. When creating an account, automatically generate an account username for the custom bet based on their name, surname or email, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you get them to put in their first name, it'll be something to do with their first name. If they're just putting in their email, then it's going to be whatever the, the first part of their email is. When creating an account, automatically generate an account password. It's not a bad idea. If you take that off, they'll have to generate their own. That way it's going to be a lot stronger password. Account erasure requests. Remove personal data from orders on request. When they erase their account, it's going to get rid of all their data. Personal data removal. Allow personal data to be removed in bulk from orders. That adds the option to the order screen for removing personal data in bulk. Privacy policy. Here you can have a privacy page and just let people know what your privacy policy is and a checkout privacy policy. Update this, personalize it how you wish. And again, you can do a custom privacy, privacy page and, and put it here. When you create that page, it will automatically be added to this list. 
or by default there's a privacy policy page anyway. Now personal data retention. Choose how long to retain personal data when it's no longer needed for processing. So you can say zero months, zero weeks, three days, retain cancel orders, three days, retain completed orders. Might want to keep those for a little bit longer. So let's say one month. And you can change this to drop downs here, months, days, weeks, years. So let's save those changes and move on. <laughs> okay, we've got a flag there. We can't do zero months. So let's do put that to days, retain inactive accounts for two days. And I guess it's the same with this pending orders. Let's save that for just one day. Now let's save our changes and move on to emails. And these are default ones that are created by the WooCommerce. If you want to edit it, just hit the manage button and put in what you want here. Put in custom messages when people purchase stuff. Let's go back. By default, I'm going to leave mine just as they are because it tends to work fantastically. Just out of interest, let's look at refunded order. You could put something in like Or whatever makes sense to you. Save our changes. Back to the emails. So you can go through and just select and edit them as you see fit. And at the bottom here, it's going to be for, for my site name, which is divi4ecom, as you can see up there. For my email address, you can add a header image to the email if you want to, same way as we added that image earlier. Just get the URL and put it in there. Footer text, put in what you want. That's fine with me, WooCommerce. You could put in your brand name or whatever. Uh, header image actually wouldn't be a bad idea to put the logo in there. Let's actually do that, shall we? So let's go to our media library again. I've still got it open up here. Shut this one down. There's our logo. Copy that, control C, and pop it in there. You might want to send a test email to yourself just to make sure it's going to display correctly for you. You can change your base color, background color, body background color, and body text color. So customize it probably with the colors of your logo or something like that, whatever floats your boat, as they say. So let's save those changes. Move on to integration. Now, MaxMind Geolocation is to add geolocation lookups, which means it'll automatically find out where the country is that your customers are coming from. Since mine are all coming from the United States, I really don't need that. It's free to sign up. If you want to do that for your particular store, just click on this link here. And you can sign up for a free account. Create an account on MaxMind. and just sign up put in your details there obviously like I say for me that's not going to work or it's not really pertinent because everybody's that I'm selling to is from the United States so I already know where they're located okay and this just tells you, you the, the file path of the database for this information which mine I'm building mine on my local machine here so it's going to store it there in the WP content uploads WooCommerce folder Okay, no changes, so we don't need to change anything there. And last but not least, let's go to the Advanced tab. Now here you can decide what's used for what, cart page, checkout page. The drop-down will show you the pages that you've got created by default, and you can select it. Like I say, we're building this with a Divi theme, so I'm going to be making custom pages for most of these. So we'll be covering that at a different time. Now if you've got an online store 
it's not a bad idea to have an SSL certificate. People will still buy for you and it's perfectly safe with PayPal and, and gateways like that. But you're going to need an SSL for that. And there's a bunch of free options out there like Cloudflare that comes to mind. I've used that plenty of times. You don't need to purchase a high dollar SSL certificate for your site for this. So just Google Cloudflare, C-L-O-U-D-F-L-A-R-E, and you can set up a free SSL that way. You just need to point their name servers to your DNS, and it's pretty, they, they've got some tutorials on there. Endpoints are applied to your page URLs to handle specific actions during the checkout process. I'm going to leave these exactly at the, as they are. They need to be unique. Um, unless you know what you're doing, I'd probably leave those as they are. These little question marks I should have uh, mentioned before, they've got nice little popover tips if you're not sure what's going on. Same with the account endpoints. Now I didn't change anything so there's nothing else to say. So there we have it, that's pretty much the overview of the settings of WooCommerce. They're quite important but they're not that complex. Go through, set it up how you wish. Now I know I said this before, in the next video we will be actually creating a product. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, share, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.